What's up everyone, today's video should be pretty quick, but over the past few years, I've had a couple of coworkers and or friends reach out to me asking how much the Georgia Tech Masters program costs me. So basically, today's video will just be me pulling up the receipts as well as some caveats. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and show the spreadsheet that I used to track and plan it when I was a student. So basically the degree itself is 30 credit hours, which is 10 courses. You can do more if you want to, but I think most people just want to get the degree and get out, which is what I did. So I have all of the semesters listed on the left. For each semester, I listed the classes I took, uh, the credit hour sum. So as you can see, this eventually is adding up to 30. And then this here is adding up to 15, just because you need to do 15 credit hours towards your chosen specialization, which for me was machine learning. I also listed the average workload, like the number of hours I spent. Uh, and this is based off the website OMS Central, which is basically like a public poll of how the students that took the class, how they went about it. So that basically means on average, uh, people spent 6.6 .6 hours a week on AI ethics and society. And then on average, people spend 12.92 hours per week on AI for robotics. And then this is kind of a weird format, I know, but this last cell in each section is the sum of these two. In the first few semesters, so this was fall 2020 through fall 2021, they had something called a special institution fee. And basically that just added some extra costs to it. So for example, if I look at the screenshots of what I actually paid in the fall and spring and fall again, I had to pay an extra 194 for this special institution fee. I don't really know what that is, but for whatever reason, they dropped it after the spring 2022, it looks like. Fall 2020, I took two classes, paid, 1381, spring, took another two, 1381. Summer, I took it off. Fall 2021, paid 1381 again, did another two classes. And then in spring 2022, I just took one class and that was 841. I actually, you know, registered for two classes and then ended up dropping it. Then in the summer, the last few ones are cheaper because there was no institutional fee. And uh, the total for the masters was $5,825. That's what I paid out of pocket. And that factors in the last two semesters being paid for or reimbursed by my work. And I definitely think that you should consider trying to do that if you work for a business that is willing to pay for it. In my case, I worked for IBM all up until this time, essentially. And the reason why I didn't have IBM pay for it is because they have a clause and many other companies have this, I would say most of them actually, have a clause where it specifies that if they pay for your classes, you have to remain at the company for X amount of time after you finish the class, or in some cases, after you finish the entire degree. So that was definitely not something I wanted to do for IBM. and. I basically just paid for it myself, which is really not that much. From a financial standpoint, I don't think there's a better move than doing the online masters at Georgia Tech just for the cost and the brand name, especially if you can get your employer to pay for it. My company will pay for up to $10,000, no strings attached. And obviously the Georgia Tech master's program is way less than 10,000. However, the true cost is definitely in the time cost. So just for fun, I tried to calculate it. As you can see, fall and spring semesters are 16 weeks and summer semesters are 11 weeks. And on average, I spent around 18 hours a week just using these values here. So I basically just averaged the total hours per week per semester. So 16 weeks times 18 hours per week and six semesters for me because I did six fall and spring semesters plus the 11 week summer semester times 18. I only did one summer semester, as you can see, and that adds up to 1926 hours. And if you divide that by 40, assuming you work 40 hour weeks, then that comes out to 48 full-time work weeks, which is essentially a full year of 
full-time work, assuming you get like two weeks of paid vacation. So that is definitely the real cost right here. This is probably the primary reason why I don't recommend the program to a lot of people, especially like my coworkers who are already senior software engineers and have families. Really, this degree will take a full year of work, basically. And that makes sense. 30 credit hours is pretty much what most one-year accelerated professional master degree programs are. Obviously, you can go slower than I did. You could go faster than I did and really speed run it, but I would really, really not recommend going any faster than I did. I, I did as fast as I can while trying to not lose my sanity. So hopefully you found this helpful and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.